His name is Ish Berry, and this is Berry Media Unrestricted. He explores the city of Houston, looking for people who are not afraid to get unrestricted. Interesting men and women who have an extraordinary journey, doing the kind of things that make great stories to tell for the rest of us. Now get ready for Unrestricted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Unrestricted Podcast. I am your host, Ish Berry, and joining me today is one of our esteemed guests, um, one of our most viral guests, Lauren Victoria. Welcome back. Got a virtual interview. Anybody that supports the podcast know I don't like doing virtual interviews just because there's so much that I can't control, and I'm a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff, but... It's got to be something important if I'm going to get on a Skype call with somebody and do an episode. <laughs> so first off, I want to thank you for joining me on this um, this sat- Saturday evening, night. Yeah. Saturday evening. As we record this. And um, tonight's, well, today's episode is going to be part two to a series that me and uh, our mutual friend Nora started um, working in retail with customers you have. First Ugh. off, Norris and I, we work kind of like on the grocery side of things. You work in actual retail and you have far longer experience than us. So I, I, will, think- I will, I have to stop you because okay. I do have grocery store experience too. I worked at Albertsons doing COVID. Oh, you did say that. Okay. You yep. did. You did tell I, me that. I have a lot of customer service experience. I have like, well, I'll let you finish. Yeah, let's dive, let's dive into this. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with your attitude and persona and stuff. I can only imagine the stories you got I, to tell. I, I mean, I, okay. To so, say, When you say customer service, mm-hmm. I've worked call center. Mm-hmm. I've done retail. Okay. And when I say retail, there are, t- there are three different, well, three different worlds of retail. You have clothing and accessories, Mm -hmm. you have general merchandising, and then you have grocery. Yeah. General merchandising would be places like uh, Ross or Marshalls or Home Goods or things like that because it's different things are like um, Home Depot. That's general merchandising. So I've worked in every aspect of that retail world grocery store, general merchandising, retail, and then I've also worked in the food industry briefly. Okay. Well, not briefly, for a couple of years, because my grandfather owned a spot, a barbecue spot in Houston, um, in the hood, and I used to work there on the weekends during the summer, and so, and uh, was waitressing there, and okay. I worked at CC's Pizza. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. There'd be some, it would be some afternoons when we were kids we didn't hear from you until night. And if it was like during the day, like let's say if it was raining or something and me, Norris and our other friend, Joe, we couldn't go out or we didn't have no money or whatever. There's like, well, damn, you know, we're Lauren at, and then we heard from you at night. You was like, oh yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, was, I, my, I I was, I, I, I worked at night. It was like the, it was an after hours restaurant. So I worked overnight and then um, I worked in financial customer service. I worked in a banking institution and I worked at a check cashing location. Um, and what else? And I babysat. So. <laughs> I yes. hey, you know, oh, I'm- no. And yeah. I worked at Joanne's Fabrics. That was that was another one. That was one of my first jobs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I have a variety. <laughs> Hell of a variety of experience. A variety. So, where do you want to start? Shit, let's start. At, and I should have did. I mean, this really, and for people that don't know, like this literally just happened at spur of the moment. So I don't have <laughs> no notes and nothing ready. <laughs> um, I guess let's start with you. Ever ran into a situation, um, specifically in retail where you wanted to fight somebody? Oof. There are several incidents. Fight, specifically, fight a customer. You you got. The- I knew what you meant by that. Okay. I don't um I don't play with coworkers. Okay. Um, cause the the thing is with coworkers, normally I get along with everybody. If I dislike you, typically a lot of people at the job dislike you as well. It's not it's nothing 
it's nothing that I typically do, but I've never really disliked anybody. And, and anybody that I have disliked, they typically, they don't end up being there long. And it's not, it's not for me. It, it's just, yeah, you know, but customers, let's see. The first time that I physically wanted to hurt somebody actually was at my mother's. Ah, and I also worked at my mother's toy store in Canada. That's how I lived in Canada for a couple of years. Cause I ended up working there on a work visa. I forgot about that as well. Oh, and I worked at a bingo hall too. Damn. <laughs> so, um, the first incident, honestly, that I can remember, I was actually pregnant with my son at the time. My mm-hmm. mom had just opened up her, um, for the record, my mom owns a teacher store, um, Learning Adventures, Toys and Games. If you're in Canada, she's in Saskatchewan, North Battleford. Quick shout out, had to do my mama, you know. Yeah, but um, she had just, what it started off as a teacher supply store and classroom toys. Okay. And so this was mostly teachers. So the lady had bought a calendar, let's say, I think in August, which was, the, no, aug- yeah, she bought the calendar in August because they get a whole month ahead of school at that time to set up their classroom. So she came and got a calendar and it was like on this display stand. So it was like a blue canvas calendar that you could slide the, the calendar name. You probably always seen it in elementary school and you could change the numbers on there. You can put the month. You could say if it was sunny, rainy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It was one of those with the display stand, the the actual blue canvas and the calendar, which came into a bulletin board set. So if you, what you, if you don't know about a bulletin board set, it's a pre-made set that you just pop out and it'll have different designs on it. Well, this one was the calendar, which she popped out and, and used, mind you, laminated and everything. She used it for an entire month. And then after she used it, she realized it took up too much room in her classroom. So she wanted to get it back and get get back in cash. She didn't even pay in cash, but that's what she wanted back. Mm. A month later, after being used, and when I say used, I couldn't resell it to anybody for full. I would take a loss. So, So my mom did not have a rule printed at the time, like signs. That said, you know, no returns on open merchandise. But by the time I got there, I or I had the rules posted. So okay. the lady was like, well, that wasn't on the receipt. And no, she was like, that wasn't on the wall when I came in. I said, that may not have been on the wall, but that was definitely on the receipt. Because I see here you have uh, seven days to return, must be unopened and unused. I said, this is neither of the case. It's a month. It's been 36 days. It, you've used it. And you also, the, the bulletin board, everything. Yeah. So she ended up, so we go back and forth for about like five minutes, but I wasn't rude to her. I was just like, I just kept stressing the same thing over. Like I'm calmly telling her because mind you, I am pregnant. So I'm not even trying to catch an attitude with anybody because I, I like, ma'am, I'm pregnant. It's nothing that I, like if I wanted to catch an attitude with you, I couldn't because I can't really defend myself because yeah. I'm pregnant. Yeah. She had another lady with her, it was two ladies. And so she looked at her and she was like, well, I don't know what the fuck she wants me to do with it. And she balled it up and threw it at me. So I stood like, Why do people I, have- I don't know how long this took. That, oh, Canadians ran wild like that. Damn. So she, and she stood there and like, after she threw it, she made like this, like head notion, like bitch what? So I looked and I was like, did you just throw this at me? And she was like, yes, I did. Do you have a problem? So my mom, I don't know if my mom saw the, like where she saw it going because she was in the back. So I don't even know what part of the argument or the, not the, not even the argument, but the disagreement was because she was loud. I wasn't. Yeah. And I, my mom just runs out and she was like, you know what? You go in the back office and you go, you know, she tells me to go in the back office. And she takes care of the customer. And I I never in my life wanted to jump over a counter so bad and just start wailing on somebody because there was no need for you to throw. You could have you could have thrown it on the ground. Oh yeah. You could have slammed it on the counter. Oh yeah. You you could have threw it backwards. You could have even ripped the motherfucker up at this point. I'm sorry, but you really could have. But to throw it at me, 
Yeah. That was so disrespectful. And absolutely. And I like she didn't. I don't. She didn't know that I was pregnant. So I did. It wasn't because of that. It was she was just being outright disrespectful. That was the first. That was one of the first ones. And then, but I have several more because I Family Dollar and Rainbow just took me to the king. Family Dollar. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that because Family Dollar is fucking notorious. <laughs> and in most Family Dollars, if they're not in the in the country, then they're in the hood, you know. So I can only imagine. I've never experienced people to where I wanted to fight that I recall. Like I've gotten into it, but I but I mostly I mostly stop thieves. My store manager was the one that got like the most brutal altercations. Oh, like man. period like I remember one night I was scheduled to close but she called me and was like um we gonna have to shut the store down you can come in but you have to sit with me because we have to wait on the police and the crime scene unit to come because a guy got jumped in the store and he was like this harmless homeless guy but yeah. he was like really really weird and so he was just really, really weird with the wrong people that day in the store. And they ended up stabbing him like 27 times Ooh. in the store. And so when I got there, yes, he was I alive, see. mind you. Let me just say, crack does not kill because he was alive and he got up and walked off. But he told the police that he got stabbed 27 times. And my manager said he had to have been stabbed that many times because three people had a knife and they were juking him like a couple of times before they took off and left. So it's a possibility he could have been stabbed that many times. And yeah. but he was like on crack and he like got up and he like walked out. That's what they said. And the, because I, when I got there the ambulance had had just arrived and they were getting into the truck to go find him walking down the street. And they asked me, that was like, did you see him? And I was like, he was stabbed cuz I just saw him at there was a Dollar General like three blocks down. So when I was driving to work, I was like, there's a Dollar General. He was walking past the Dollar General just a few minutes ago. So the ambulance had took off to go catch him to see if he was okay. And when I got there, it literally looked like a murder scene. Damn. And then we had to wait. We had to wait on word on whether or not we were getting a hazmat team or if we had to clean it up ourselves. But we had to clean it up. And the bleach smell was so strong that people, you couldn't be in the store. So we ended up just cleaning it up. Yeah. And leaving, but I like I never I didn't see it, but that was like the wildest shit that ever that happened. Oh no, I'm lying. There another incident with my store manager on my day off. A girl would she, and it, she was off, and she had her granddaughter with her. She was only at the store because she went to pick up somebody and bring them to work who had to work that night, and their car didn't start. Okay. So she picked the girl up and dropped her off and like she was standing at the, the door like, all right, we finna go. And her granddaughter was standing beside her and they said that the girl like was running out of the store with a purse full of shit. And so my store manager made the comment to her granddaughter like, girl, get your ass out the way cause, so she can get on up out of here. Like she didn't even say anything about the lady just so she can get up out of here because you could. she was beelining for the door. And the yeah. girl stopped and was like, bitch, what did you say? What did you say? And they got, they had words. She was like, girl, you, you want to, she was like, take the bag and go. Like you running out of here. You got somewhere to be. You're not going to run my, I got my granddaughter with me. I don't want like, you know what I'm saying? Just go. Give yeah. it our pass. They said when she got to the light at our, in front of our store, the girl had pulled up on the passenger side of her vehicle where her granddaughter was sitting and rolled the window down and pulled the gun out on her. And was just like, so what was you saying in the store? So I said, it, it, like, it, 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 people are crazy. Like, customers are crazy. Yeah, there was an incident, and um, I don't believe I shared this on the last episode with Norris, but um, this was, I want to say, last summer, me and a coworker of mine, we were over in produce, and there was this couple who walked in the store, a black couple, men and, and female, and the female, she was a bad bitch, you know, she had on, and again, this is the summer, so she had on short shorts, a tank top looking good, and so the boyfriend caught another guy looking at his girl and got offended, you know, and we caught the tail end of it, 
and the guy was like really trying to fix hey stop messing with my girl stop looking at my girl and the dude the guy who was looking didn't say them you know you know you see someone finally you just do a, a double take or whatever and i guess maybe the guy stared too long or something <laughs> but um uh, or maybe because i catch myself sometimes you know i see a baddie and i'm like i'm like mumble under my breath like god Damn, you take the, like really? <laughs> you got to be more inconspicuous than that. Like Jesus. <laughs> and, but the boyfriend really wanted to fight. Like he started taking off his shoes, and me and my uh, my coworker KP, uh, we heard this loud talking. And the way our store is designed, like produce is right next to the frozen section, so they would just pass produce mainly over in the, the first aisle of the frozen section so we turn around and it's like oh shit we need to get a member of upper management here to handle this like yeah, you will I, wanna i pay great and we just watch because they would always call me to stop breaking up fights and i'd be like why like i'm not getting in the middle of that shit like you bet i don't get paid it, to be the referee it, now exactly. i get it, paid it, to stop the know what has on them you know huh? I said, in this day and age, you never know what someone has on them. You know, a person could have for a... For real, like, for you know, real. Like, I, I, I didn't you know. know that until I moved to Baton Rouge. I will say this, because even in Houston, I've never experienced customers like I've experienced in Baton Rouge. Like, I'm terrified for my life to argue I, with people here. Like, for real. I'm, you know I'm what? not a scary person, but no, one not. day jump, Talk to two day stab, three day shoot. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get killed over anything. Like you, baby, it's insured, you can have it. <laughs> I'm gonna say, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't take that. But I'm not finna just like Yeah. Now nah, and it's sad because like, you know, although, you know, I'm I'm I don't live in Louisiana anymore, but like on Facebook, I still subscribe to a lot of the New Orleans news stations. And I hate to say it, but man, Baton Rouge is a rough city now. You know, <laughs> like I still I just lied because <laughs> If, yeah, it, it is rough out here. Cause, but I'll tell you at Family now, Family Dollar, I got some funny security stories where I stopped thieves. Now this guy actually got away, but it was hilarious. Okay, so this crackhead had loaded up this basket. It's always so a crackhead. He was a crackhead, like because let me tell you what they do. They go and they steal all the laundry detergent, and then they'll sell it on the side. Like you'll sell, like you get a like them twenty dollar bottles of laundry detergent, like them huge ones. And they sell them for like ten dollars, you know what I'm saying? And people buy them off the side of the street. I know. It's I a good little hustle for them, but we already knew what was up. But unfortunately, I was behind the register that day, and I had a male with me that was on the floor that wasn't paying attention. So by the time that I saw him, he had already had a head start from the back of the store, like pushing the cart really fast. I heard it, but by the time I seen him, he was already going too fast for me to literally. Catching. Mm. So I ran out the store to like see what direction he ran in. And all of a sudden, okay, so there's, <laughs> a, we're across the street from this major street, but on the right hand side of our store, it, if you make a right, there's a neighborhood there. So there's a, a, a street in the neighborhood that you can go down. And so sometimes when they're stealing, they'll go run down that street. And the car will be parked on the side of the road and they'll just throw all the stuff in the car. By the time we get to the car, they already have like more than half of the stuff in the car and they driving off. Gotcha. So this, but he didn't have a car. He had the cart. But like I said, he had a running head start out of the door, running from the back of the store to the front door. He made a, he got into the parking lot, made a wide turn. And I mean, he was running this, when I say crackhead fast, I mean crackhead fast, because by the time I got to the door, this like motherfucker said, was already uh, in the street. Uh, and our parking lot is huge. Okay, when you when I say our parking lot is huge, it is huge. So by the time I ran to the door, he was already on the street. And he said, ha ha, see you later. And he took a foot and jumped up. He jumped on top of the basket like an airplane. And, uh -huh. and no, I can't, I promise to God. And he was fly, like literally on the basket and using his arms and his body weight to steer the basket like an airplane. So yeah. you just see a crackhead flying down the street on this fast ass moving basket, flying down the street and he's gone. I shit you not. Oh, the Lord. next day I was at work that I was at work that morning. He said, hey, sister gal. 
he was outside when I was uh cleaning, like cleaning the parking lot before we opened. I said, I, I said, you better not bring your ass back in my motherfucking store. And he said, oh, I, I, he said, I got enough for the day. He said, I just came to bring you your basket back. And he pushed that bitch back and took off running. Wow. <laughs> they did honor among thieves. Like, at least he was kind of to bring the basket back. Yeah, he said, hey, sit the gal. I said, you better not bring your ass back over here. He said, oh, no, he, I, I got enough. I got enough for today, which means <laughs> that once he runs out, he plans on coming back. But, but the thing was, like it got to a point to where the thieves knew that if I was at work, it was I like I was like on and popping. Like I never physically put my hands on people. I would just like they I to be honest, as big as I am, they never heard me walking down the aisle. Like I would yeah. sneak up on them as they're putting shit. I bought the time just for shits and giggles, like my coworkers. Yeah, I walk in silence. So it's like I would happen to be doing something and I would I would just see like because I would walk around the store and straighten up as I go. That was my job. And there was this one time, this one, this girl, she's like, when I say cockeyed to the ninth power, I mean like doofy off of a scary movie. <laughs> like Dewey, Actually, what was his name? What was his name off scary movie? A doofy, officer doofy, yeah. Doofy, yeah, okay. So Smell my finger, my ass. <laughs> yeah, like cock like a fucking pistol, like just just straight here. And she has this big ass backpack, and I seen her when she walked in with this empty backpack, and I was like, oh, bitch, you ain't seen me, but I seen you. So I just walked a different way. She walked straight to the washing powder aisle. I just walked like two hours back, like where she's already on the aisle. So I walked two hours back and walked up the other way. And I'm watching her. She has her back to me because she's expecting me. She's expecting somebody to come from the front and not from the back. So I just stand there and I just lean on the counter. And so I grabbed a bottle of bleach and I opened it because some of the bleaches have the tabs popped off. And this, thank God, this one has the tab off. So I popped it open and I said, so really, is this what the fuck we doing up in here today? Like, are you fucking serious? I said, I know your eyes touching your motherfucking nose, but I know you're not finna pay for my shit. So put my shit back on my motherfucking shelf where you got it from. And she was like, oh, I wasn't finna steal this. I was finna pay for it. I said, oh, you was? I said, well, give me $200 cause that's about how much motherfucking laundry detergent you got in your hand. You can pull it out right now. Man, you ain't even gotta act like that about the motherfucking washing powder. I said, if I was you, I, I'ma bleach your fucking face if you don't push my shit back. <laughs> And so she sees the bleach in my hand. Like, I I don't know if I would have poured it on her. If she had attacked me, I probably would. But I wasn't just going to pour it on her. And she was like, man, y'all be tripping up in here. And I said, yeah, we be tripping. But it, 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 you're you going to get fucked up in here. And so she put the shit back, come out. So she as she walking out, she telling another girl, don't even try it because this fat bitch up in here all in everybody motherfucking face. And I said, yeah, and your ass will get bleached too. Damn. Oh, there was another time where another crackhead tried to rob us, and I did hit him. I I popped him because he he tried he ran up on me and he scared so me, but I didn't know. Gotten awards from for you from your places of employment for real. I, uh, well, I'm not even gonna lie. I I was I, I, that was the job I got tipped the most at too. Okay. Yeah, I got tipped the most at that job, but um. No, it was crazy because he actually ran out of our fire escape door with a basket full of detergent. But see what he didn't know, like we had our, 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 the way we had our thing set up, we had it blocking the fire door. So because we knew that the thieves would run out the fire door, but yeah. he pushed our charcoal display from in front of it. But we never really tripped on it because right behind the store is a drop. Like we were on a hill. Mm, okay. So when you step out, you you can lift you. Two people broke their ankles stepping out from that back door because Ooh. it's a steep hill. So when you you yeah. just if you don't know no better, you are gonna fall to the ground. You got to know where to step. Yeah. So he ran out the back door, but when he pushed the basket out, the bitch tipped over and it flipped over on him, and it uh the all the detergent fell on top of him. So he was like on the ground. So when we heard the alarm. I'm taking it. I'm like outside throwing detergent back into the door so he can't grab anything. So he's like struggling because the basket is on top of him. So mind you, I got like 85% of the containers. It's like five or six of them left on top of him. So I'm like trying to hurry up and get them. 
but I really don't want to touch him. But I guess when I came at him, he kind of swung. So I was like, meek, 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 meek. And then I took, I took the other one back. And he was like, you fat bitch. You didn't have to hit me. I said, bitch, if you get him to hit me, I'm going to bang your ass again. But he couldn't get up because he was stuck in that heel. Oh, yeah. he in the basket, every time he moved, the basket was getting on top of him. So I, like, kicked him again, and I pulled the basket and pulled it in the store, and I pulled the door shut. So the dude was outside. The dude, again, it was his scary ass, Trey. His name was Trey. He was inside the store, and he was like, did you just five-piece that man? And I said, I was trying to serve his ass a biscuit and a drink, too. But like, oh, yeah. I had to get my fucking detergent back. He was like, I was going to come help you, but you... <laughs> like, but I'm like, that's a man and he a crackhead. Like, he cannot touch me. Like, he cannot get the best of me because when he hit me, I might be knocked out. That Those are crackheads. You don't fuck with them. But I, when he swung, I really thought he was trying to hit me. But he could have been struggling with the basket because I was trying to just get as much shit back into the store as I could. And then I they found out they had that on video. I think they had that on video, too. Wow. We had... Um... I was at actually earlier this year over the summer, our our store just got remodeled, but the way it was, it's like the entrance to our back room area for online grocery is over like by the dairy department. So you got the double doors that take you in the back. And then if you I mean literally go straight, you've got the double doors that we used to go outside to give the customers, you know, to go in a parking lot, give the customers their, their stuff. And, uh, it sounds like it's built like Albertsons almost. Well, I mean, each one is a little different and yeah. uh, the store is a little bit older. So oh, it, okay. just remodeled it. Yeah. So, and so we're, we're on a whole other side of the building now and they made us our own little special area, knock down walls and stuff. But I never forget this one Friday, um, this black, tall black guy, he just he has a shopping cart with beer, like two two suitcases of beer, and um, a whole bunch of. Meat. And so he just comes through the back door, and then one of my coworkers was coming in from coming in the store from outside, and he just busts through the door and the alarm goes off because the door had just closed. Mm -hmm. And at first I thought he was a truck driver because sometimes when truck drivers come they get our area confused with the actual warehouse in the back, you know? And sometimes, you know, truck drivers, long hauls, you know, they buy groceries and stuff. And I was like, hold on, I ain't no goddamn truck driver. And it's like, it was about mm -hmm. five of us in the back and we looking, and we're like, who the fuck that man is? And then I go out the window, I, I open the door and I start <laughs> on and the guy, he, He's just power walking, cruising, not a care in the world. And well, my co is like, hey, stop, thief, like from coming to America. No, that wasn't going to do nothing. But we just laughing there because my my company's policy is, you know, they don't they don't want us interfering when people steal because, like we said earlier, people are crazy. And it's just like it's not only that, <laughs> but they sue. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, they sue. But it's just, it's just, it, it's crazy how the guy would have that much confidence. And like I was telling my coworkers, they do must have cased out, and he must have looked back because the double doors we have, they're mostly black, but they do have like a window. So he must have, you know, went to our store several times, and he must have saw that, hey, if I walk straight, then there's going to be an emergency door to lead outside. And if I park my car a couple of feet over, then bam, I can load the stuff in my car, drive off. And, and that's what he did. Yeah, <laughs> like, we just look oh, at. Oh, man. And ugh, Albertsons. Oh, you know what? I also worked at Kroger's in Houston, too. The one that was off of uh, Belfort and. Fuck, what was the name of that street? All I know is Fiesta was right across the street from it. Oh, you talking about Belford and Telephone by Hobby Airport? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. right by Norris's parents' house, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I worked over there, and when I worked over there, back then, they had just installed the first, um, oh, man, this reminds me. So we, we were one of the first stores to get the self-scan. This was a while back. This was like 2006, 2007. Okay. And um, 
yeah, that was my job. And I worked overnight. Well, before I worked overnight, I worked at the daytime and there was this guy that used to come in and he would always flirt with me. But he gave me, he looked like a light-skinned version of Frank from Moesha. Okay, okay, gotcha. How like we- he was light-skinned with the hat top, but he that, but that's who he reminded me of. How old were you? I was like uh, 2007, 2008. Shit. I was 1803, 21. Oh, I'm not 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay. No. Okay. Young, 20, no, like 21, 22, 22. So I got flirted with all the time at, at yeah. fucking Kroger. So, but anyway, he would flirt all the time. But then I switched to nights to work the overnight shift. Because the my girlfriend at the time, she worked overnight, but my shifts were shorter than hers. Yeah. So I would have the car work overnight and then go pick her up from work when I got off. Gotcha. And um, because I dropped her off before I went in. I would have to drop her off at six and I got in, I had to go in at eight. And I was off at uh four and she got off at six. Okay. Cause she worked a 12 hour shift. So I work overnight. So he came overnight. On a, it was like Saturday night, but Sunday. And so he came through and it was like 11.58. So it's Saturday night. They stopped serving alcohol. You know what I'm saying? That late at night on a Saturday before Sunday because they don't sell alcohol on Sundays. Sundays, yeah, in Texas, yeah. Yeah, so when he was, it was like 11.58. So then like the, I normally see him like pay for like a little bit of groceries and then he leave. But when I saw his basket, it looked just really, really off. And he looked off. So I looked like the register pings. And so I can pull up your receipt and see what you're trying to scan and everything and see what's wrong. Oh, that's so right. He showed me that he's trying to scan one bottle of wine. However, this nigga got like six cases of wine in bags. Like he took them out the boxes and put the wine bottles in bags already. But he's trying to scan one, but when he was scanning his regular groceries, he was bagging the wine bottles up in the regular groceries. But because I was, I had talked to him before, I really wasn't paying attention until he tried to scan. The, I guess when he did it, it must have scanned it because he looked shocked when it went off. And yeah. I was like, you can't buy wine this late. It's after midnight. It's 12.02. I said, why you got? Oh, pull it out. You can pull all that out. <laughs> and mind you, there was a security guard. He was in there too. And um, an incident that happened previously was why he was outside. He, they normally sit in their car. But yeah. something had happened. I could, that's another story. Something happened previously. So now, at my request, the security guard had to be inside the store because of what happened before then. So he happened to be right there. And he was like, say, man, uh, you pull all the wine bottles out. But he had a pistol. He was registered to have a pistol, so he, he he like he hit his hip, and he was like, "You being real, um, you over there acting all fucked up, and won't sell me this wine. Like I want your fat ass. You must be mad because I asked you for your number." And I was like, "Nigga, you're not the only one up here that asked me for my number. I've never given you my number, nor have, nor have I given my number to anybody else. Just because you can't afford to buy these twenty eight bottles of wine, you mad at me?" I was like, "You're broke." Like there is a freaking state law after. <laughs> I no no, but he was stealing them. He was stealing yeah. the wine too. He but when he was putting when he was bagging the groceries up, he was putting a wine bottle over the scan bar. He just fucked up and scanned it by accident. Uh, I, okay. He was trying to steal the wine bottles with his regular groceries. Gotcha. And I so but that's how he got caught. I said I never even called you a thief. I just said you can pull all them alcohol bags out your bag because I can't sell them to you. I yeah. never called you a thief. And you got you calling me a fat bitch. I was like, well, fuck you too. So the man was like, I said, you can have all this shit back. And I canceled his entire order. I said, you can go and go. You don't need nothing. You don't need nothing tonight. Yeah, I want to I want to segue a little bit here because one of my pet peeves in life is that okay, someone gets mad at me. The first thing they go to, oh, you fat ass, you fat motherfucker, some <laughs> some kind of fat obesity. It's like. <laughs> I've been fat all my fucking life. I look <laughs> every morning when I brush my teeth, get ready to, to start the day. Like, you don't think I fucking know that? I fucking embrace it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, 
I, you, you can't it always be fat. Now, lately, I've been a bow headed bitch. And I'm like, but I cut my hair by choice, so I want to be bald, bitch. It's not hurting my feelings. I could slap a wig on, bitch. You're still yep. ugly. At the end of the day, I'm a fat, bald headed, pretty bitch. That's how I feel. Nobody else can make me take that. They, nobody can take that away from me. But, bitch, you're ugly. You're bad built and you're ugly. I always thought that just so amusing. It's like whenever someone gets it mad, it is. It's like you can't say nothing else. Yeah. Can't say nothing else. You can't. You can't insult my intelligence because I'm I'm smart as fuck. You you can't diss my quality of work and my creative stuff because not to toot my own horn, but you know my stuff is top notch. You know you you can't call me poor or something because I I do all right for myself with my income and balance of money. You can't call me a deadbeat dad or anything because I don't have no kids. You know so it's like. You just go straight to the weight jokes. Like, come on, think of something else, anything else. And it, even my they friends, go for the they go for the first thing, and if that's what they think it'll hurt. And I'm <laughs> just like, you stupid motherfucker. And I, I like honestly, oh my god. Now this is my favorite. This is when I worked at Albertsons. This was during COVID. Okay, okay. so I will. I'm going to give a shout out to all the people who worked in a grocery store woo, woo. during COVID because. Yeah. The amount of shit that you guys have to go through, I did not know this. I I felt sorry for you already because I come from a customer service environment, but I actually worked that shit for about seven months. Yeah. And I have to applaud y'all. And I feel like what they they should have kept that raise for you guys because that was some bullshit. Oh, then we got raised. Some places didn't because Albert, when they gave us those hero and they gave everybody mandatory that work that was a that was a uh remember we got a two dollar raise like everybody got a two dollar raise well they dropped that program and i felt like they should have kept that but that's the only th- oh, we'll cut you off real, real quick the only thing that my company stopped doing they gave us like three during covid during the actual lockdown <clears throat> excuse me we had every three months they gave us a bonus if you was part-time it was 150. If it was full time, it was I think three. They did that for us too. And but then, it was only for a little bit. It was only yeah, for a couple of months. Yeah, it exactly. But they did. And overall, it depended on how many hours you worked, um, how much money you got, because it was a it, you could get so much. I remember yeah. that because I got it, I got it too when I worked there. But I'll never forget, like we were so short staffed that they were hiring people on the spot and we weren't even getting trained on how to work the registers. They was just, if you knew how to count and you knew how to hit buttons and you knew how to move on and scan groceries, your ass was tired. Yeah. Yeah. So I had already worked, I had previous grocery store experience because I worked at Kroger's and most of the vegetable codes and everything are still the same. Like, so I remember most of them and um, I, I was like, yeah, I know how to do that. I know how to bag groceries, whatever, whatever. So I was in the 10 items or less aisle. No, 15 items or less. There was this big ass COVID sign like directly in front of my register. But the way that the line was going, if you were standing past the sign, you would see me because that would be the next person in line. So I'm ringing up people and I say next person in line because I do... we. And sometimes the people aren't paying attention and they yeah. don't pass that sign so they can't see that my line is open because of where I am. So gotcha. I'm loud as hell. I'll be like, next person in line. Next person in line, please. So I said it like five times. I didn't, because of how the line worked, I couldn't see the other people in line. I didn't see anybody. Gotcha. So I see a guy that's standing. Now, mind you, there are three cash registers open because we know everybody called out because they got COVID. Yeah. It's me and two other lanes. At this point, they were allowing me to take full carts of groceries because of, you know, it was just us and we were too busy for me to move to another lane. So I see this guy with a, with one bouquet of flowers. So he was black. So, you know, the international, I looked at him and I'm like, and he was like, I say, like, you know, it was a whole silent conversation. He walks across, I ring up the roses, and I swear to God, this white Cindy Lou Who ho comes out from behind this time. What the fuck 
is going on here? Uh, here. He just cut in front of me. So I'm like, oh my God, I did not see this woman standing here. And um, I was like, ma'am, I am so sorry. I didn't see you, but I did. I did ask several times for the next person in line. I was like, he's about to swipe his card. Do you mind? You can do. You can just come on up and not, you know, you can start unloading your groceries. And she was like, this is some fucking bullshit. I've been sitting in this fucking line like she's going off. And I was like, yes, ma'am, I understand, you know, the inconvenience. I do apologize. Well, y'all need to do something about it. And I said, well, you're more than welcome to get an application because I stood in line here a couple of weeks ago. And that's what I did because the lines were so long. So I volunteered my time to come work here to help them out. I said, we're very short staffed. And I said, so I'm trying to get them as fast as I could. I did like, again, I can take, uh, he's done. Let's go ahead. So the guy is standing there. He was like, ma'am, I'm so sorry about that. He is apologizing to her. So she said, oh, it's not you. It's this fat bitch. I said, oh, you talk about me? And she said, yes. I said, ma'am, I'm going to politely let you know that if it wasn't for me and my two other coworkers here today, you wouldn't be able to get your groceries. I said, matter of fact, you know what? I have a full-time fucking job. I'm just on a leave because our store closed because of COVID. I, like I said, I was volunteering my time and I don't want to, I don't want to volunteer no more. I clucked my register light off. I closed my thing. I paged my manager. I said, Miss Queen, can you come please come get my drawer? It's time for me to go. I'm ready to go home. She said, excuse me? I said, I'm ready to go home. So you're not going to ring me up? I said, baby girl, it's going to take Jesus to get off of the cross and to come get his father to come tap his hand on my shoulder and to tell me to be kind where I'm going to look at her and tell him, father, I love you, but that's impossible for me to do. Good for you. That's what I'm talking about. And she was like, what you mean? I said, I don't have to tolerate your attitude and neither do my coworkers up here. I'm sorry that you are rude, entitled bitch. That feels Ooh. like she can come to somebody's job when they're doing the best that they can with what they have, and you feel like you can insult them. I don't know what crack meth ass house that you work at, but I don't tell you how to stir your fucking chemicals or what hazmat suit you should have on with your mess face looking ass. I said, I don't have to take your shit. I don't get paid enough to take your shit, and you don't pay me enough to take your shit. I don't need it, and you need me. I don't need you. And I walked off. And she was like, so who's going to ring my groceries? I said, I guess you want to stand your crackhead ass in line behind all the other people that's been waiting on these two cashiers all day. And yep. I, you know what? And I apologize to the other people that had that was behind this woman that missed my line because of her rude ass attitude. But they don't pay me enough for this. And I left. I came back to work, though, because they begged me to come back. And everybody, t- they like, everybody was like, I was like, I'm so, like, I cannot believe the entitledness of some of those people like now COVID time that tested my gangster I lied I didn't want to fight people because I didn't want to get sick and the people that was trying to fight me were people who looked like they got sick all the time yeah you know I'm I'm happy to say that during the lockdown I didn't experience that from customers like in my store don't under this this was a different breed I heard horror stories like, fortunately, at least in my store, my area, the Spring Branch area, people were nice. Like, I never forget this one time. Um, and during COVID, I was a dispenser. So I was a guy when customers pull up, they check in or call, I get the order together and I, you know, bring it to their car. And this one woman, she had ordered a whole bunch of um, party stuff, like, you know, chips and stuff. And so I'm loading the stuff in her car. And she stops me when I got to a certain point. She was like, oh, you could keep that. And I'm like, huh? What do you mean, miss? And she's like, no, the rest of the stuff, these chips and, and sodas, that's for y'all. I know y'all working hard, and we appreciate I appreciate you coming to work every day, and you and your fellow coworkers busting y'all butts, and y'all got 80 cars outside and stuff. And I'm like, wow, really? She's like, no, y'all have a party. Like, bring that back in. And I was like, and I told my manager, I was like, you're not going to believe this. Like, this woman literally bought us cakes and ice cream and chips and sodas and stuff and want us to have a party in the back. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie. We had customers that did, like, they would come up and they, you know, I, Albertsons, I got tipped well, too. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I bet God. I the grocery store. Oh, I made so much money. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I, I, I did oh my too. God. Yeah. I, oh my God. And let me tell you, I worked in almost every department in that damn grocery store. I worked in the meat department, in the seafood department, and I worked in produce for a little bit. 
cashier, and I was supposed to be liquor. <laughs> I, but I worked, my job was liquor, but my job was to keep it straight because I was just part-time. So the full-time manager there, she did all the ordering. My job was to fluff it up at night, clean up, straighten up the shelves, dust, keep it clean, and, and reorganize it for in the morning. So in the morning time, I would come in there before they close, like four hours before they close and make sure everything looked full. So in the morning, it looked like a brand new setup. So that was my job. But because it didn't take me long to refill everything, because mostly when they was buying liquor, they was buying liquor. So all the good shit was already gone. So it would only be one or two bottles left. There was nothing to replenish it with. So I just had to make it look as full as possible with yeah. that one little bottle and, you know, move on. And so when I did once, once that my job was done, I would go help out on the lines to help bring the lines down to help, you know, the customers. So we had good ones, but I, I mean, I've had, I had frozen pizza thrown at me. Ooh. Um, Oh, this white bitch came in with her baby. I'm sorry to say the word white, but she was a white hoe and she was a bitch. And that's what she was. And that was the God honest truth. She came in with her adorable little girl. We closed at, we closed at 11. This bitch walked in at 10.58. Oh, I hate when they do that. So me, I was like, how you doing? I said, ma'am, um, we closed in two minutes. I was like, is there anything that you need? Can we go grab it for you? So we can go, you know, because we're supposed to be closing down. And she was just like, I just need to get some milk and some pampers for my baby. I said, okay, well, what kind of milk? Because the person in dairy was like standing right there. And they was like, okay, I'm going to go grab this shit. Let's go. And she was like, well, I need to get it because it's weak or whatever. So she, so she on the phone <laughs> and she said, yeah, girl, these motherfuckers trying to rush me out the store. And they think I'm finna, I'm gonna take my motherfucking time because I got shit I want to do and I gotta take my time. Fuck it. So, Ooh, I, yeah. I, 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 Shut up. I was the last register open. Oh, oh. So I wasn't mean. She took her time. Like I said, she walked in at 10:58. You talking shit at 11 o'clock. At 11.00.01, I opened my drawer and shut my light off and closed it and printed out my ticket and walked to the office and started counting down my register. Yes, that's how you do it. Fucking right. And then when my manager wasn't looking, I hit the reset button so that all the registers would reset. So that none of them would even take a credit card when this bitch thought yes. she was going to walk up to the thing. Because by the time we came back in the morning, we were closed for the night. They'd be up by six o'clock in the morning. I mean, by five. They would be up by five. It only took 20 minutes. She just wasn't going to get that shit then. Re and what register? They were all closed. So the, the security guard goes and gets her because he knew what was up. It was a police officer. He knew what was up. Y'all know me. I'm not going to ring nobody up. I don't want to ring up. I told y'all I already got another job and I don't need your shit. So, you like the Everybody hates Chris. I got him. I am, because you would hear me say that at work. I would tell people, I say, you know, I really do have another job. I really don't need this. I can go home. I can go home. I can go home. So we, um, so she, she was, so she gets on the phone. So by the time that they get her out the store, all of us are walking out of the store because they were done for the night. We've counted the last register. It's time to go home. And she is like, bitch, I know it was your motherfucking ass that closed that register. I said, I was. I, 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 I was. And she was like, yeah. I, like I said, bitch, I needed to get some milk. And I said, and like I told you, we closed at 11 o'clock. You knew your baby needed milk at 10, at 9, at 8, yep. at 7. I said, we have online ordering. You could have placed the order. And we could have had, like, again, we could have had it ready for you at the door. I said, when you decided to tell me that you are going to take your time leisurely, I'm going to go home. I have other things to do other than service you. And so she was like, bitch, I ought to beat your motherfucking ass. I said, you really should worry about your daughter. When we get to our car, she happened to be parked in front of me. Uh-oh. So I was like, okay. I had to, I said, I even said it out loud. I was like, all right, Lord, you tested me today. So she said, what? What the fuck you saying? I said, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the Lord. 
Uh, you you would you would want to let me. And so as while we're talking, she's putting her baby in the car. So she throws all her shit in the car in the back seat with her baby. Now she has buckled her baby up in the car. Like we going now, now after all of this, she's doing this. And she was like, yeah, bitch, as soon as I buckle my motherfucking baby up in this car, bitch, it's on the top. And I said, oh, well, bring, bitch, bring your ass on because I don't clock out for the night. So I throw my shit in the car. And I, lo- you know, I close my door. Yeah. So I stand by the car. So she gets out. I said, bitch, I wish the fuck you would. So by this time, I had an umbrella in my hand. And she didn't see it. And I was going to back the piss out this bitch. Because I didn't <laughs> want to really hit her in front of her daughter. But I was going to bang her ass. So by this time, the police officer is flashing his lights at us. And she was like, yeah, bitch, you scary bitch. You got the police. I said, no, he's doing his job. You would want to get in your fucking truck. Yeah. So she tries to open the door and the fucking door is locked. All her, she done locked her baby in her fucking truck. Dumbass. And um, locked her keys in the truck. Now, I didn't mention that when she was calling us names, she also called us some niggas. Oh. So she was like, yeah, that fat bitch, that flat nigga bitch, she she wouldn't, because she, again, she was a white bitch. She went, ah, 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 wouldn't let me get no motherfucking milk. I said, bitch, I wasn't finna let you walk around and tell me what the fuck time I was finna go home. You don't, you don't pay me, they do. And I'm at 11 o'clock, I was done. I've been yep. here all goddamn day. Shit, I said, it ain't my motherfucking fault. You can't produce no milk out your titties, bitch. What the fuck? You <laughs> mad at me. And so she was just like, bitch, get out, you fat nigga, bitch. And so that's when I was like, bitch, you go and put your baby in the car and, and come on. So I'm, I'm now we're not talking no more. I'm out. I'm out. But yeah, she like, so she was like, I, I need you to call somebody. I said, I wish to fuck my nigga, bitch, would call somebody for you, bitch. You finna learn today. I got in my car. I said, good night, everybody. I hope everybody has a good night. And they was like, what's wrong? I said, oh, this bitch like, come motherfucker, get into the car. She want one of us niggas to call the police for her. I said, well, that nigga police officer over there, maybe he can help you. He could, everybody was niggas. That nigga police officer can go help you because we were all black. So we was niggas, right? Go ask yep. that nigga police officer for some help. He said, oh, um, <clears throat> what time y'all close? I said, 11. He said, y'all, y'all, everybody clocked out? Yeah. Everybody in that car? Yeah, so everybody starts their cars up. He said, well, as long as the Kroger employees are safe, my job is done for the night. So we all drove out the parking lot. Bitch, we found out from the cleaning staff that uh, the tow truck didn't come to her till 4.30 that morning. So she had to sit outside because she left her phone in her car. She threw her phone and everything. So they, um, somebody, in the, one of the cleaning crew people, a Hispanic lady, felt bad for the baby. And went out there. And I did feel bad. I, like, I, I'm sorry. I did feel bad for the baby. But that bitch had to learn a lesson. Like, oh, you're yes. not going to call me no. Like, you going to learn. And you going to learn what you just did to your child. Like, your child going to have to see an example of your stupidity, bitch. She going to learn then, not to fuck with niggas in her, for the rest of her life because of this. And then my thing is just the sheer audacity. How she going to. Yes. Even without the name calling, you're going to walk into a place. <laughs> Two minutes before they close, everybody know that's like the universal thing that people hate working in retails, gas stations, whatever, a restaurant, you know, any place of business, and want top notch service, and then going to ask for help. Like I wouldn't, have been, I would have been too embarrassed to ask for help, you know. Exactly. Like, and let I me just, tell you how guilty I, I feel. I my hand or something like, hey, I'm going to take this L and pay to get my window fixed, you know, <laughs> like. Like I, I feel the me like now I call places, like not grocery stores, but like like retail stores, and I'm like, look, like I've called Lane Bryant. Look, I need a 44H and a black or ten, you know, a black or a brown, dark brown bra, preferably of a you know full coverage. Do you have one available? Yes, you can ring it up right now. What matter of fact, do you have Zelle or Chime? I will send it to you, please. I, you can pay for it for me. You don't need to put no discount in. You can bring it to the door when you close and I wait. And the lady was like, it's not that serious. No, it is because when I'm ready to go home, I know what it feels like. And she was like, oh, well, where are you? I said, in the parking lot. <laughs> and she was like, come in. So I had my, like, I'm tapping and ready to go. She was like, 
you worked here before? I said, yeah, I used to work for Lane Bryant. So I know, you know, I, I know how it feels. This is why I use a card. I don't even want y'all to, you know, have to count no cash behind me. I'm trying to keep it as seamless as possible. And she was like, I wish more people were like you. And I was like, they would have to actually work retail to be like us. Oh, for sure. For sure. To understand. Um, Other people in retail feel bad. Like when I go in the grocery store and the line be long, I don't even be mad. I yeah. don't be mad. It's not, it's not that somebody didn't schedule right. And you ain't got nobody to work. It pisses me off when people be getting ignorant with some people in that line. Because again, I worked it briefly. I, I ain't no veteran in that, but I worked that. And that shit don't be their fault. They can't, you can't get mad over a fucking barcode that scanned the wrong price. Bitch, I didn't make it. I didn't put this bitch in the system. I didn't do it. All I can do is call my manager over here to change the fucking price. When this bitch comes along, this when this bitch comes along, it's not like you just waiting, bitch. Me and everybody else behind you has to wait. So you cussing me the fuck out at my job for some shit that I cannot control is just beyond belief to me. And so sometimes I be really wanting to knock the customers the fuck out. Oh yeah. I don't even I... get mad when the when the cashiers have an attitude unless they have an attitude with me because when I come across, I try not to be rude because I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I, I worked a, a 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. shift at Albertsons one day. I, I and we I got to pee one time. Oh, one time. I didn't even get to eat. I ate at the register, and uh, mind you, I got written up for that because I ate at the register, and I had a cold drink at the register, and they wrote so a customer called and complained on me because I was eating, and she said it was unprofessional. You didn't know that I had been on my fucking feet all day on the register all day because nobody came to work. So I, when when them people have attitudes, I get it because I know what you get. I, like I get it. If you have to, like you don't fuck with them kind of people. No, nah, you're right, and 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 that's the what you said right there is why nobody wants to work. To have that job, you know, why? wants to work that those. Is... It's not worth the bullshit. And it's like not. I. I, I tell, when I used to dispense, I used to tell customers, like, if I had 10 cars outside and I was the only person, you know, customers would be like, oh, wow, you know, uh, y'all should hire more people. And, I, you know, I tell them, I was like, look, if you go inside the store, we got hiring signs up. I said, but stop and think about it like this. How many people wake up in the morning and say, oh, I want to work for Walmart? No one says that. This is a desirable job. Who says, so, let right. me go. I want to scan groceries for the rest of my yeah. life. Nobody thinks that. No, this is a job that you, this is like a last resort kind of job or for a lot of young people, a job, you know, their first little job out of high school to teach them some responsibility or help them out while they're in college or a second job. Like, I will, grow, but I will grow. say this, but, in a grocery store, you can move up fast. Yeah. And you can have the possibility of having your own grocery store like really quickly because I was only there for two months when they tried to promote me to a manager. But that was another story because I didn't get along with one of the one of them all the manager bitches. Her name yeah. was Queen. I was like, now yeah, you want to talk about fighting co-workers? I lied. That bitch. <laughs> that bitch. That's, that's I just want you to know, Queen, if anybody or anybody related to you that works at that Albertsons knows you, I want you to know, and I'm looking into this camera that when I see you, it's on in the parking lot. You were a rude, evil, nasty, fat, manipulative, ball headed bitch. You were an evil person. I hope you rot in hell. I want the exclusive streaming rights to that matchup. <laughs> They're going to call it. I, that bitch was evil. Sign a match. She is the reason why I don't work there anymore. That I, I quit. Damn. I, um, you damn. ever known somebody who got, they like, she she had multiple cashiers, mothers and grandmothers coming to the job to beat her ass. She would go run into the office. That's how evil and mean she was. Fucking crazy. But um, no, I try to tell people all the time, like customers in the stores and even like even in other departments like electronics, you know, electronics get overwhelmed and they're like, they need to hire more people. Like, man, like people don't wake up in the morning and say they want to work. Like, want to wake up and take 90 miles of your shit. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not <laughs> that of a job. And I even told one lady, um, I was I was putting her groceries in her car and she had her kids in the back seat. And I'm like, ma'am, I said, yes, yeah, so you got kids here, right? And she was like, yeah, I said, 
if your kid woke up tomorrow and told you, mommy, when I grow up, I want to work at Walmart, you would have a heart attack or something. <laughs> you would have to grow up to be a doctor, an attorney, a firefighter, a cop, an astronaut, a scientist. <laughs> so, you know, so, yeah, you know, hell, even even a, a trade skill like a, a steel worker, construction a worker. A truck driver, a barber. Yeah. Yeah, truck driver is a, a good, honest living. Hell, even a trash man, trash man. man thank you. Good benefits and stuff nowadays. Like, you don't want your kid to wake up and say, oh, uh, you know, I, I, I want to I- work for Walmart. I want to work for um, Lowe's Home Depot or something like that. Not that there's anything wrong with those jobs. No, but- it did, because I, I worked it. It's nothing wrong with it at all. But the amount of shit that a person takes at those particular jobs and the amount of pay that they receive, it's not it, it pales in comparison like Great. you got people throwing groceries at you because they're upset about a mask policy i didn't make the law i didn't cause this i didn't do it <laughs> you're absolutely right yeah, no nah, it's 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 bonkers um and i really wish people just stop and think like you know yeah we can like, have high you know any of these stores can have hiring signs out but no one, no one wants to work these jobs unless they absolutely have to. As absolutely. You know, they're getting ready to get evicted or they're in a dire straits. And that's, that, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm a, I, I, can't, I can't speak on that because it's some, some, depending on the type of worker that you are, some yeah. people move up quickly. So I yeah. could be a cashier today, but I could be the manager of the meat department in, in six months and I'm making like, that's, you yeah, know, yeah. five figures. Yeah. And that's that's you know you know or I got a salaried position so it, that it it and then we got paid every week like mm. clockwork so you was never broke because yeah. by the time like you know what I'm saying so I got it, a money to bam you did direct deposit come. yeah on a Thursday yeah yeah you turn it up on Friday it was over. <laughs> That's right yeah but, Kroger did pay every week yeah I forgot yeah about that. and Albertsons did too and and but it was. It was that that I, I, like it's I, that I do self checkout. I used I used to go against it, but then again, I'm like shit. I don't ever want to come back to scanning groceries. So who like so uh, unless y'all go work at at some place like that and you actually scan groceries, then don't under wonder why I don't nobody want to scan your fucking groceries. It's because of it, and it may not be you directly, but it's somebody that you know or somebody that you have rela- related to that it fucked up for everybody else. Oh, I want to go back to something real quick. When you asked me about why people be staying around and the registers, yeah, why? one of the best jobs I ever worked at as far as retail was Target. I worked at Target for a little bit. And what made the job so cool was that the store manager, he was a little distant. Like he wasn't like a store manager that like really just knew everybody and took his time to talk to all the employees, but he worked his ass off because there would be several times when we would have a rush in the early afternoon and they would call him on that walkie and it didn't matter what he was doing. He could be in his office. He could be having a meeting. He could be um, uh, in receiving, talking to, you know, the people that work in the back of, you know, where they do. And he would stop what he's doing, go to the front, open the register and, and, and actually talk to the, you know, do what he's supposed to do. Like he was a model example. And this was the, and um, you the- have, you have managers like that. Like, I'm a manager like that. Oh, and I always commend them on that. I used to look, I was like, yeah. damn. And you know, like me, I'm a people person. So I like to kind of like, you know, management, like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, but, you know, not everybody's like that. But I respect him because I heard him several times. They come on, hey, Juan, you know, we we starting to get a line. And he used to tell those cashiers, like, hey, when y'all start getting a line, when there's more than five people in these checkout lines, call me. You know, and he would stop what he's doing. And go out there, open the register, scan, talk to the customer, shoot the shit, whoop de woo. And as soon as you know the, the customers were gone, he'll close his line and go back to whatever he he was doing before. That, that was me. And um, because my manager, the, the store manager would call me all the time. Lauren, come to the front. I come to the front and I get them people out of there. And one lady was like, damn, like you are fast. I said, I don't want to be here just as much as you don't want to stand in this line. I need all of y'all to come on so I can get y'all out of here, please. Let's go. That was a really <laughs> joke with me. Uh, it's time for y'all to go. I don't. I'm tired of looking at y'all. It's time to go. Let's come I on. Know. Right. Let's I, go. I, I, <laughs> customers um, ever 
like you said earlier about the guy where you worked at Kroger hit on you. What are some of like the off the wall shit customers have said like about you, like trying to hit on you, trying to get your number, um, even if it has to do like with your overall physique, you know, yes, we're going into the, the titty realm, you know? <laughs> Okay, well, when I was working at the Avenue, mm -hmm. there was this guy. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, but there was this guy. He would come in and he would shop for his daughters. Now, his daughters were like 15 and 17, like relatively young. At this time, I'm like 19, 20. Like, okay. so I'm, I'm, no, I'm 20, 21. But like, I'm 20, about to turn 21 at this time. So I'm like relatively close to age with them. So when he was, he would, that he was their father and he would bring them in for back to school. Well, I always was very well kept up. I would keep my nails done. I had my hair done. My feet were always done. I didn't really wear makeup all the time, but I like for the, for back then, I had what I had on. Stop, Asher. Stop. Stop. So one particular, I didn't have a vehicle, so I always rode the bus. So one particular day, I get off the bus and it pours down raining right before I go to work. Hey, when that happens. So my hair was really like I had a knee long, cut short, permed hairstyle, gotcha. and it was curled, you know, curled. So by the time, stop. By the time it rained, my hair had like curled up into this afro puff, but it looked horrible. Gotcha. So I had to go, and then I was stop. So, say you lying. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, so I had to buy clothes from work because I got drenched. But because yeah. like I was broke, so I was wearing something that I typically wouldn't wear. It wasn't my and my manager gave me a pass because at the time I had just started working there and I hadn't like I hadn't got my like real first check yet. Like I was a, a week in a hole. So it was oh, yeah. like my third week. So that week I was getting paid. So that's when I was getting my real check. So the guy comes in and he was like, oh my God. Like, ooh, what happened to you? Like, I'm sorry, not like that, but your hair. Like, I've never, like, you always have your hair done. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to find a scarf that I can borrow to, you know, tie my hair up or whatever. And he was like, Oh man, I have never seen you look like this. You always have yourself together. He pulls his wallet out and he pulls out five crisp one hundred dollar bills and he hands it to me and he says, "Um, go get your nails and your hair done and go go um take care of yourself and get you know get back to you." He said, "What happened?" I said, "I don't have a car, so when I got off the bus, the, I got rained on." And I was like, "So he was like, well, who clothes do you have on?" I was like, "I had to buy this outfit because my clothes were soaked. I couldn't come on the floor." And he was like, yeah, buy yourself some clothes, too. Like, buy yourself. He said, matter of fact, don't buy it with that money. And he asked me what I wanted out of the store. He had, they had me try it on. Everybody had me try it on. At this point, all the people got involved, like my coworkers, because. It was like a like, make some yeah. shit. Yeah. So the manager is like, when well, you're going to get your employee discount and it's going to go into your name. So this will be your sale. So this is good for you. So he buys me like $700 worth of clothes. But by, like it wasn't that much, but that's how much the clothes would have been without my discount. All right, gotcha. Shoes, shoes, clothes, jewelry, everything that Avenue sold, underwear, bras, he bought me everything out of there. Damn. So he was like, yeah, like put, he said, um, I'm going to go find you a cute hat or something at a store. And da, 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 da. So he came back with a hat and everything. And then when he called, when he was like, hey, I'm on my way back. He called the store. He was like, are you all hungry? Did you eat lunch? He was like, I'm, I'm over here by um, Papa's Barbecue. Oh, okay. Because we were, the, I worked at the Avenue by Alameda Mall. So okay. he was going to the Papa's Barbecue over there in that area. And he was like, yeah, I buy everybody. He bought me and my two co-workers food and brought all the girls food. So oh. he left this, this, like all of this happened like within three hours. So when he left, my hood ass manager was like, girl, I, I know you got a, a girlfriend, but I ain't gonna tell her shit about this nigga because if he kept coming up here spending money like this bitch, he can do whatever the fuck he want to do with you. And I was <laughs> like, I'm not even talking to him like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? He ended up like, honestly, he ended up like giving me money all the time. Like, Damn. all the time. All not, the time. I commend that guy. I commend him. 
all the time. And I never, I never slept with him. I never did anything. I was in a relationship, and he knew that. Yeah, I was very upfront. I was like, I don't like no lie, guys. I couldn't do it without something in return. I'm sorry. No, because he started <laughs> off by saying, because I always, because I related to his daughters, but I was a plus size girl who just recently, you know what I'm saying? I was, uh, yeah, I was 22, I was 21. So I just recently graduated high school. So I yeah. understood what it was like to go shopping at a store and they have old lady ass clothes because of our size. So uh, I knew what to look for because I had already went through this in high school. So it was easy for me to dress them. Like you can take our jeans and get any shirt. Like you could dress it up with any shirt and you can, it's the shoes. So, so he was like, you always treat me. It started off like you always show my daughters a good time. And when I, and, and honestly, when he came in, I don't care what kind of discount I could give you, but if you're a customer of mine and you spend it some money and any, anybody who has been in my line that, that has been a favorite customer of mine or a good customer of mine will tell you, if you buy enough stuff, I will find a coupon or some type of discount that you can use in my store that is legal. It is not illegal. I will just tell you, like, uh, you might want to go online and go check the online website because, you know, we we do price adjustments. Like, if you go online, uh, you know, print that coupon out. Well, you know what they saying online? What, what's the code word? Like, something like that so that it'll make them go and get the discount. So I always gave him a discount. And the thing about Avenue at that time was if you apply for a credit card, you got 15% off your purchase, whether or not you got it or not. So he would come and shop every four months, like a huge haul and apply for the credit card just to get the 15% off. And he did it like four times with me and he didn't get it. But that fifth time he got it. Wow. And then, so I got a check every time he applied for a credit card too. So it, it worked in my favor all the time, like every time. So he was like, you always was looking out for me. And I was like, well, I always got big commission sales off of you. So yeah, why wouldn't what? I? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was, that was one. Um, I just recently had somebody serenade me at my job. What? Okay. I don't don't okay me because I really don't even know. I don't understand how it happened. I'm still confused. I don't know what part of that conversation like took it there, <laughs> but I was really doing my absolute ass job. Like I promise you, I was asking him what kind of watch he wanted, and we got to talking. He said he asked me, "Did we do military discounts?" I said, "Why, yeah. Well, you know, you served in the military." He said, "Yeah." I asked him what part. He said, "The army." I said, oh, "Okay. Well, you know, thank you for your service. We give y'all ten percent off." And I was like, um, so he was like, yeah, I was looking to buy a couple of watches. And I said, well, if you were looking to buy a couple of watches, why don't you check out online and see what they have available? Um, because at the time when you signed in online, like when you got on the website, a coupon for $25 off would pop up for online yeah. only. But if you showed us the code, I could use it to, for your purchase. So he was he he pops up and he was like, oh, it's a coupon on here. You can use that. I said, yeah. If you just show me the code, I can add that with your ten percent off. So on whatever watches that you want. So he was like, oh, okay, good looking out. I said, you're welcome. Again, thank you for your service. So what watches are you looking for? And he's, you know, we talking about it. And he was like, yeah. And I said, so are you in? You know, are you active duty? Like, are you on? Like, you home? Like, you know, what? You know, what? You know, just having conversation. Yeah. He was yeah. like, oh, um. Well, it was my mom's birthday because I'm actually like I live in Atlanta. Like that's where I'm stationed right now. But um, I was here for my mom's birthday or something like that. And I was like, oh, OK, well, you know, happy birthday to mom. And are you going to get her a watch today? Like everything was about a goddamn watch. And he was like, yeah. no, I got her this, that and the other. And I said, oh, OK, these are gifts for you. And he was like, yeah, just to treat myself when I go back home. Blah, 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 blah. So I was like, OK, cool. So he was like, cause I really don't live in Atlanta. It's like on the outskirts and that, you know, and I like, I'm just here to see what y'all got on sale. I said, okay. Well, he was like, yeah, I see some nice stuff up in here. And I was like, okay. He's like, well, you know, the army and the only thing that I do. And I was like, oh, okay. He was like, yeah, I sing and I, I write and I, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, I think so. you like a, a Leonardo da Vinci, you a Renaissance man. You can do it all. You're fighting the war and you can sing songs. He was like, yeah, something like that. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. I said, but it's also nice to have something to fall back on when you get out the military. I said, so is that what you're going to pursue when you get out? And I mind you, I'm ranking him up. We doing our thing. And he was like, yeah. 
he was like, matter of fact, I got a song I can sing for you right now. And he starts singing this love song. And I'm like, he was like, yeah, that, I dedicate that one to you. I was just a little bit nervous. And I was like, oh, you dedicated that to me. Like, he was like, yeah, I would love for you to hear more of my music. I was like, oh, oh, I mean, yeah. And he didn't have a bad voice. It was just like, I don't, I don't know what to say because I wasn't expecting you to sing a whole fucking song in the middle of my store on the floor with in front of customers and everything. So I, everybody was like looking at us and I'm just like, oh shit, okay. He's like, do you have Instagram? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. And he was like, yeah. So he was like, just, um, what's your Instagram? So I, I gave him like my throwaway Instagram that I don't rarely use my other one. Yeah. And he was like, okay. So he was like, all right, well, you have a, he was like, you have a good one, beautiful. And I was like, oh, okay. So then he left his watches in the store. So I was like, oh, shit. He also paid for them, right? Yeah, he paid like, for them. Everything rung up and everything, okay. Yeah, he paid for them. Like, okay. like I said, mind you, while we're having this casual conversation, he paid for them because I got his email address. So that's how I was able to find him on Instagram. Gotcha. So, I was like, fuck, he didn't give him, like, I don't have his nothing. I just have Instagram. Fuck. So I end up messaging him from Instagram from my throwaway account, right? And he pops up. He was like, yeah, I was just trying to make sure your Instagram was real. Wow. I was like, oh, bro, but I don't use that Instagram. So it uh, it's real, but yeah. <laughs> it's real quiet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's so he bought all those watches for nothing, basically. Yeah. I, 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 oh. Don't you don't you don't you downplay my selling skills. I don't, <laughs> no. from that. I don't give a fuck. You come to my store and flirt, you gonna spend some motherfucking money for with me. <laughs> I'm not gonna take I again. If you're going to waste my time, you gonna pay for it. I said that in the other. It's either going you gonna pay for me to get in the club and buy my drinks, or you gonna come to my job and you gonna buy my shit. Don't come up here wasting my time. Fucking up my conversion. Don't fuck up my conversion. I get bonuses, bitch. Don't fuck my shit up. And that's the trigger right there for this episode. I love it. <laughs> don't fuck my shit up for real. Like people don't understand like retail, like how this is okay. I'm a store manager. So a lot of things that we do behind the scenes, a lot of people don't know. Like, please don't, like, guys, when y'all go into a store in the mall, please don't walk in and out the store and stand in front of the door, in and out the store and in front of the door. We have a counter. And every time you motherfuckers walk in, it counts you. And we do something called conversion based off how many steps of people come in. So when you're walking in, it is counting you as a new customer every time. Please stop walking in and out of the store. Sit your ass down, or if you're not ready to shop and you need to talk on the phone, stay your ass outside. Okay, you be fucking up my monthly bonuses. (laughs) Wow. Yes, that is a pet peeve of mine in retail when people walk in and out of a store like they will you like that because that's something that you can't control. You know what I mean? We can't, but they the counter doesn't can't distinguish the delivery guy from Miss Rosa oh. who wants to bar, buy four watches. Yeah. So when when Miss Rosa is coming in to get her battery changed and her husband is with her, but he don't want to wait while she's getting her battery changed, he walking in and out the store three times. It just said instead of the two people that came in here, now it's saying five people were in here. And I only did one transaction. So now it's saying 20% of the customers that walked in here I helped when really it was 50% because it was only two of you. Oh, that is so inaccurate. Wow. Yes. So people don't understand. Like every time, even when we go get lunch, that counts us going out and coming back in. So oh. that messes up our conversion. However, let me just say that at my store, we are the <clears throat> we've been in the top ten <laughs> because all the customers that do come in our store, we do make them customers. So that's why our conversion is so great. But people get bonuses off of that. So if you could just do one thing in a in a retail store, stop walking in and out the door. 
okay. I ain't gonna, I gotta tell myself I was guilty of that uh, earlier this month. I was in the Galleria. I was waiting for a client of mine that eventually ended up standing, standing me up because we were supposed to go to this uh, in the Galleria Mall. They have this photography studio, and I was uh-huh. gonna go to pictures. So I waited on my client, and I'm like, you know what? Let me walk around a little bit. And I went in this clothing store that have like all these athletic jerseys. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna walk around. So it's like I went in, walked around, went out. Check uh, my phone had went off, so I'm thinking this my client wasn't her. Yeah, I walked back in. So if they have that same system as you, they, like, most most stores do. So people don't you like that's just a, a hidden thing that people don't understand. But they count our footsteps, and some people's livelihoods are based off those footsteps because that's how they get bonuses and how they get other perks and things like that. And my God, another thing that really irritates me at the mall is like when them kids be running around and their parents ain't got no control of them. I see that all the time in my store. Like, I had, like, we had, you know, Barbie dropped a couple of weeks ago, right? So we had this huge Barbie, like, cardboard dream house that we had to put in our window. Beautiful dream house. It had a balcony. It had balconies on it, a lawn, like the when we put it together, like a tower. Like it yeah. was a cute little house. I think I have a photo of it. I can send it to Well, I don't know if I can send it to you because it was my. Well, I can because people were taking pictures of it. I just got to cut the people out. But okay. so a lot of people would come in and want to take pictures with it, which is fine because it was designed to be that way that you could take pictures of the front of it and the back of it. Because the okay. back, even if you, like, in the front, in the window, it had all of the Barbie products in it on the balconies. But on the back of it, it had the exact same balconies, but it was empty. So if you wanted to take a photo in front of it, it was photo ready. Because the okay. movie was dropping, and a lot of people were dressing up in pink and in Barbie. And it was just really, really cute. It was a fun thing. Well, it had this little boy. I'm in the office, and I'm on a conference call. And I hear my manager say, oh, no, no, that's not a toy. That's cardboard. That's not safe. I automatically know what she's talking about because we've had to tell people several times that it's not a real house. It's cardboard. So it's real flimsy. Like, if gotcha. you touch it, you could break the balcony. Like, it, if you hit it hard, like, people were thinking it was a house and hitting it or trying to lean on it, and you can't. So I hear her say it. Then I hear a lady say, oh, it's okay. Just climb on it. And then the next thing I hear is, and I'm like, what the fuck? So I jump off the conference call and it's this little boy and he has Down syndrome. So I like, I immediately like, I just stopped in my tracks because I knew if I reacted, like if I exploded, like I wanted to, I was going to hurt, like terrify him because I didn't want to scare him. He was a kid. So the lady, his mother was like, are you okay? And I was like, is he okay? <laughs> like, is he fine? She was like, it was an accident. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. It just, like, we didn't know it was cardboard. I said, no, I heard her tell you it was cardboard. It Like, it, it it's a cardboard display house that has my product on it that's worth about $1,000. I don't even know if my product is damaged because our watches were loose. So if when it fell, the watches fell face down on the ground, which means if it cracked the, the ceramic, I have a broken watch. And they're like $300. So if you broke one of my watches, I'm out three. That's already, that's $300. I'm out because yeah. I have to damage it out. And so I, if, so I was just like, it's $1,000 worth of product on this display. And I need to make sure that it's okay. Because this this was not a toy, and it, it and we kept expressly saying it wasn't a toy. She said, "Well, we thought he could climb on the house and and act like King Kong." I said, "But she did ask you not to touch it. I need to talk to my DM to see what I need to do about my product." And so she was like, "We are so sorry." So I pick up everything and I'm looking. I don't say anything, and I like I'm like seething on the inside, right? Yeah, so. I'm, I'm- Add for you. I'm, I'm so yeah, and so I'm finally it comes to a point, and I'm just like, it's okay, nothing is broken. He's not, he's okay. And she was like, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. She was like, yeah. Again, we're so sorry. We we really didn't. And I said, no, it, yeah, 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 okay. 
And so they were like, are you okay? And I was like, don't ask me that right now. Like, please don't. Because I can't even get mad like I want to get mad because that baby had Down syndrome. And I didn't want to scare that child. Because your raggedy ass mama knew better than to tell you or to encourage you to do something like that. And so it's not his fault. I don't blame the child. It's the mother and the father and the grandmother and the siblings that was encouraging him to do that kind of shit. That shit was not funny. He could have really hurt himself because we also have tables behind that display. If he uh, fell back, he could have hit his head on the table. He could have fell face forward. We have hardwood floors. He yeah. could have really hurt himself. And you thought that that was funny to tell your child to climb on a cardboard house? It yeah, sounds I, I, like I didn't want to fight her. I just wanted to, to scream like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. It sounded like to me it's damn uh mom maybe the one with fucking down it syndrome. Was because she was the one like it's okay, just hang by me. It, 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 it's the thing, like when I was a kid, my parents always told me, and you know, growing up there were certain displays and stuff that I saw that I, you know, wanted to touch. And my parents like, no, keep your fucking hands to yourself. You know, like as a parent, you need to tell your kid down syndrome or not to you know, keep your hands to themselves. Like, I, I don't... Wow, that's... that's yeah. Crazy. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, well, you just, like, you just don't understand how people, like, just the, like, the thought process that goes through their head. And it's just like, I... <laughs> but I'm known to be nice nasty. Mm. Same here. I'll be or I'll be too blunt. I tell you one thing I see a lot at my job. I see a lot of people like they're shopping, they're getting their groceries or whatever, and they're letting their kids just run wild in the store. And I watch a lot of the local news, right? And I'm thinking, you know what? I see why they got so many missing kids now. Because oh, I'll if say I, none of that. When they come in and say, I'll be like, ah, ah, ah. I said, no, no, we don't do that in here. Yeah. Where's your mom? <laughs> Go hold her hand. <laughs> And it's okay, like, and it, to me, it's like when I was a kid, if I walked 10 feet away from my parents, my, my parents are like, boy, if you don't get your ass over here, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, or if I did, if we did go in a big box retail, if we went to a Walmart or back in the day, Kmart, and I wanted to go into toys, I tell my parents like, hey, I'm going to be in toys or electronics, you know. And they're like, okay, cool. We'll meet you there. We get ready to leave, you know. You want to know why it was okay for us? Because back then they had them demo games, TVs. Exactly. And they knew we was over there playing the game. They don't have that no more. They ain't got that no more. They don't have that that no more. We had that. Every goddamn game that came out, you can go and play it at the little TVs. They had them ready for you to go play. And you could play complete strangers. It wasn't nobody. Your mama would look back and your dumb ass would sit down on the controller like this. Do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's you, why. I just look at it like, damn, how do these, these parents let these kids run in the store? Because I don't know, because they don't they don't run in mine. The kids are scared of me because I'm I'm like I said, I'm quick to go, ah, ah. Not up in here. We don't do that. No, no. They, they um they but like one of my managers said she can tell when I get mad because I go from white lady to black lady like real quick. Ooh. No, that's right. <laughs> cause they shoot my uh, I have a I have a girl that works for me, and she was like, "Yeah, cause the first time I heard you talk on the phone, I thought you were white." And she was like, "And and she's white." And she was like, "I'm not trying to be racist, but when I heard your voice on the phone, I was like, but I thought they said she was black. She didn't sound black at all." Not, you know, you don't have, you know, you have like a white girl name, Lauren Victoria, you know, like. I know, but when you, like, I'm talking urban, but honestly, if I were to answer my phone, it would be like, um, let me see. I'm not going to disclose where I work at because I really don't want nobody to come to my job, but you know I sell watches. But um, I used to work in Lane Bryant. Thank you for calling Lane Bryant. This is Lauren. How can I help you? Mm. Like, so you talk to me on the phone, that's the voice that you get. But when you piss me off, I'll be like, oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. And they'd be like, who was I talking to earlier? Oh, you were talking to me, but it's over with now. Like all the nice are gone. Like I, I like I'm done at this point. I, I like I don't know what the fuck you want from me now at this point, because it's over. With. I don't want to talk to you no more. Like I'm not gonna help you. I'm not gonna do none of this. 
So it goes from zero to 100 slowly, but I've learned to master. Like you think I have a fiery temper, but I really try to keep it cool because the one thing that I can't have you say is that I was rude to you. Mm. You can say a lot of things. I didn't give you the discount. Or I didn't give you what you wanted. And you didn't get the free thing from me, but you can't say that I was rude. I follow policy. Yeah, same here. So same. It's, it's, unfortunately, those are the rules. And you know, when I when, you know, you might have strict rules at your job that I can't come. And you know, so you have to understand where I'm coming from at this point. I'm doing everything that I possibly can. That's my speech. I'm doing everything that I possibly can within my realm of power. At this point, it's above me. You might have to call customer service to see what they may have to do. And then I would have to see proof of that. They will call me and let me know whatever, you know, what they decide to do at this point. But uh, like at this at, at this level, I can't do what you want me to do. I can't. Yeah, sure. You're right. I'm, I can't. So they'll be like, you know what? If you bow head that bitch, I, I'm all of that. I am. <laughs> I am. But I also get off at 730. So, <laughs> you know, it's I fight. <laughs> yeah, I like I fight. That's awesome. I want to eat it on that note. I can't thank you enough for spending this uh this uh hour and a quarter with me. Um, how can people find you on social media? Don't give them that uh that that uh <laughs> the burner <laughs> one. You, you, just, you know what Facebook is Facebook is the best way. That's the one I interact with the most. I know okay. it's old school, but I'm I, I constantly check Facebook. So it's just Lauren Victoria on Facebook. That's it. That's how you find me. That's I'll my put, name. In, put it in the description and comments. And as always, people, if you want to support the podcast, you could do it for free by sharing this episode, sharing any of our episodes, giving us a uh, comment, like, rating on YouTube. Apple Podcast or Spotify. And if you want to co- throw a couple of bucks our way, you can donate uh, once a month via Patreon. Our Patreon is in the description between one to three dollars a month. Get you early access to episodes, behind the scenes content, and uh, so much more. So um, there we go. When next time you come into uh, to Houston? I'm not sure, but if anybody just wants to donate to my fund, you can my yeah. Cash App. Is dollar sign M Z T O R Y eight five. I just I, you know a dollar. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah. my real my real Instagram is unbothered underscore unique. Okay. Cool. I think unbothered and unique. Unbothered underscore and unique. Yeah. I think. That's... I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that works. I appreciate you hanging out with me this evening. Oh, man. Can't wait to do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow. I got got some stories to talk about tomorrow. We're working with um, um, Dumbass. Yeah. Uh. Co-workers. Oh, my God. I'll save that one, and I have my notes and stuff ready. Oh, Until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. We are out of here. Want to help the channel remain upstanding and dedicated to the truth? then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below.